Okay, thank you, Ray. Thanks for hanging with us this afternoon, but wasn't that a great panel? Holy cow. Uh, such wisdom. And I have heard it said about, uh, about these producers that they get more done in 24 hours than the average person. Now I know why. They don't sleep. That's how they do it. So uh, I don't think I'm willing to commit to that, but, but wasn't it great? Uh, one of the things that uh, the genesis for this talk actually came a couple of years ago when we, we, we decided we wanted to add it to the program. And let's see if I can get it to, there we go. We discussed a lot of options to extend the stand, orchard grass, timothy, small grains, red clover, uh, all of which you've seen today. But if you went and looked and tried to see what effect are these, uh, these additions, these grasses or this legume, what, that, what effect does it have on yield, you'd find almost nothing. And if you found something, the, the, a lot of the stuff would contradict each other. So one of the blessings about working where I'm at right now is, first of all, working with what I think are the two best specialists uh, not re that are still active, Gary, now. Uh, on the, Gary's on the front row. But also with a team of unsung heroes. And I wrote a series of articles for Farmer's Pride that may have been the, about the easiest columns I ever wrote about the people in our program that make it possible for us to bring you conferences, uh, donuts out there, for example, but I mean hard science. Started off with Krista this morning, you've seen Gene, you've seen Gabe, uh, Gabriel Roberts. Uh, these are people that make it work. So, I'm gonna, and so this would not be possible without all of those people behind the scenes doing the agronomy prayer on their knees, counting plants in the, in the alfalfa stand. So we put together a study, and, and uh, so we put that out. And this, the point of this whole, this last five or ten minutes is just to tell you about this first year of data. We did start that trial in the fall of 2021. The treatments were orchard grass, wheat, and annual ryegrass, with or without 50 pounds of nitrogen, azurea, uh, in, we, which we added in the spring after the grass was up. We measured... And we, the royal we, right? Because that's the whole forage team, right? Uh, stand counts before, that's in September, and after interseeding. That was after the first harvest in May. Plant and stem counts are what we did. We also measured dry matter yield and botanical components, which is a rather mind-numbing exercise. Thank you to the pasture evaluation crew uh, on a rainy day who helped me do that. Uh, we, we actually harvested two times, and we the stop data collecting at this point, although I'm going to show you some pictures from August after these two harvests. So uh, we measured uh, dry matter yield, and we also then looked at the components of alfalfa grass and weeds. Now, this is Gabriel Roberts and his dad. Gabe told me to get his good side in this picture, so I think I did that, but they're actually seeding the grasses into the old alfalfa stand on the UK Research Farm with our no-till small plot cedar. There's those two. Then this is, uh, this is actually from the September before. This is what we would do then to count both the number of plants in a square foot, but also the stems that are present. And I'm just going to present the stems because the numbers of plants did not change appreciably from fall to spring. So we did measure before. And as we said, we did the botanical components. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you about five graphs from this work. And I'll try to make sure that we talk about everything on the graph uh, because it, it, it is, gets a little involved. But here are our eight treatments. That would be alfalfa with nothing, right? That's the control. We did add nitrogen in case when we're adding the grass, that maybe the grass might be nitrogen deficient at the end of this alfalfa stand. Orchard grass, orchard grass nitrogen, rye grass, and so on, all the way to the end. All of the graphs are going to be the, they're going to have those same eight treatments in the same order, okay? So if you look at the yield, this is harvest one plus harvest two, May 9, June 10, then you can see that adding orchard grass or, in this case, ryegrass without nitrogen, really didn't bump up our yields any in those first two cuttings. We saw a little bit of a bump here with ryegrass plus nitrogen, but look at wheat. Wheat was by far and away the heaviest yielding uh, addition, interseeding treatment to our alfalfa. So, if you look at which ones increased yield, that's ryegrass plus nitrogen or either one, 
of the wheat treatments. And another thing that was interesting is that nitrogen did not really bump up yields, and the exception would be here, and although the, but these error bars nearly touch, so that means that it may or may not be statistically significant. Uh, to academicians, that's probably significant enough in the real world, but we didn't see a bump in nitrogen, which means that a five-year-old stand of alfalfa has got enough nitrogen to push out the growth there for that first year for sure. Now this is breaking out those same eight treatments each harvest. So you can see, again, all the treatments along the bottom and the yields across the top. For interseeded treatments, harvest two was more than harvest one for orchard grass. In other words, orchard grass was, there was more orchard grass in June in a, a total alfalfa orchard grass together. In other words, that's the whole treatment. There was more in the second cutting than it was at first. That's true for orchard grass uh, and also for ryegrass without nitrogen. But for ryegrass plus in and the wheat, the first cutting was the big cutting. Now this is really busy, so I'm going to stick here for just a second. This is harvest one, the first three groups of bars. Harvest two, the next three groups of bars. This is the botanical component. So we would take the samples and then separate out the alfalfa, the grass, and the weeds, all right? Harvest one and harvest two. If you just look at what's going on, every time we added a grass, and actually every time we, when we added nitrogen, we dropped the proportion of alfalfa in the stand, uh, by, both by percent and by weight. And, of course, then our grass yields are going straight up. And the, the nitrogen addition tended to just make us have more weeds, except for maybe the wheat treatment. And I've, I've gone ahead and summarized our conclusions here that the interseeding of anything suppressed the alfalfa, especially in the first harvest. So there you can see that. We actually had a bit of a rebound in, a, in the amount of alfalfa in, those, in the second harvest. But I want to... This is just June, May and June harvests. The grass yields in harvest one were wheat was greater than ryegrass, which is greater than orchard grass, and the alfalfa component yield was greater in harvest two versus harvest one. So alfalfa in that second harvest was greater than the first harvest. And ryegrass and wheat yields declined in harvest two. Uh, but orchard grass got stronger, and, this, and hang on to that thought as I show you towards the end. Now, I wanted to look at, this, at the effect of these interseeding treatments and the nitrogen on the stands because one of the things we've heard today, actually, and, and we've heard it and we, we use it in, when we talk about adding things to alfalfa stands is that adding things like wheat, will, you only should do it in the last year because it is hard on the stand. And if you look at, this is the stem ratio. In other words, the ratio of stems before and after interseeding. So it's the... It's the the after number divided by the before number. If I had the same number of stems in the spring that I had in the fall, then I would get a number, I would get a 1.0 rating, okay? So the best one out there actually was wheat with no nitrogen. But the alfalfa was close to that at about 0.9. So those are ba basically, our stand count in May was the same as it was in the fall. Adding nitrogen, interestingly enough, dropped the stand count uh, noticeably in the alfalfa. And if you look at the, the conclusions, at least for this, is just one year study, all right, all the treatments then from fall to spring, effects were variable. You would, you would think, okay, well, things are working great until you get to this wheat treatment, and it's not so, it does not decline very much. And nitrogen tend to cause a greater decline in the stems per square foot. All right, now, I went back to that field several times over the summer, but I took these pictures in August, and I think it will tell the tale better than five graphs. That's the alfalfa control of about a six, so this is after the fifth year, right? What do you see? Crabgrass and a bunch of it. Wheat, crabgrass. Wheat with nitrogen, crabgrass. Ryegrass, crabgrass. Orchard grass, any crabgrass. Yay, we have a winner. That's exactly right. There's ryegrass with nitrogen. You got crabgrass. Alfalfa with nitrogen, you got crabgrass. And then 
orchard grass, no nitrogen, and a little bit of crabgrass. So what does this mean? First of all, it's just a one-year study. We did seed it again last fall. We will find out how little water it takes to get grass up or not. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's struggling right now, but it, you know, it does say that wheat or ryegrass, if you add it, you can get a yield bump, but it's going, it should be the last year you have that stand. It needs to be converted, moved into something else. Orchard grass, though, clearly, based on this, is a, a better way to extend the life of the alfalfa stand. So, thank you very much. I think I'd go with wheat. I mean, ryegrass gave you some, probably gave you something, both cuttings more so than the wheat. But the wheat was impressive. And it was also easier to seed. Uh, if we have anything lived through this dry fall, it's going to be wheat. So I, I, would, I would lean that way. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Jimmy? Let's thank him again. Thank you very much.